Hi everyone, it's Allison back in my violin studio. Today we're going to do Two Grenadiers in Book 2 from the Suzuki. Uh, now, Two Grenadiers, I always tell my students that there's a story, and, and it's one that I just hear. So, um, it, it's not written down anywhere. Uh, uh, Grenadier in French is a, a soldier, a foot, I believe it's a foot soldier specifically. So, this, this is a little story about two foot soldiers. And it being Schumann, I'm, I'm assuming that it's Napoleonic Wars. Um, so you've got these two foot soldiers, and they're hiking along, and they're a little discouraged. They probably haven't enough food, and their feet hurt like heck. Um, so it's, it, it kind of, the tune gets a little bit sad. That's okay, that's trudging along. This bit here. I think I think they're getting a bit down in the dumps, and then and then because they're they're proud, you know, they're fighting for the right side and they're going to win. They they talk themselves in. So listen to the music. It's going up. Now it's starting a little bit pompous and proud, right? break into the national anthem, right? That's the the Marseillaise. I think. <laughs> okay, so that's the low down, that's the style, that's what you're looking for. In this piece, we have, I think for pretty much the first time in the Suzuki, we have a dotted rhythm where you need to stop your bow on the dot. Um, because the dotted rhythms we had before were in, like, for example, sorry, let's do this quick, chorus from Judas Maccabeus. Now, that was a dotted rhythm, right? One, two, three, four, five. But the bow was doing a slur. But this time, in this piece, we stop the bow. Get back to the right page. So, there's a little bit of a coordination issue there. Basically, when you're a student and you're starting out what we do, um, this is, it's, it's just a, something that works and it makes life easy and you can get more sophisticated later on in life when you're handy with this. Um, you remember that adding a dot behind the note. Now I'm not talking about the dot on top of the note, which is articulation. That's completely different. The dot that follows the note is rhythm. So um, it adds half again of the value of your note. So if you have a quarter note with a dot, a rhythmic dot behind it, half of a quarter note value is an eighth note. So that note now is worth a quarter plus an eighth. What we're going to do, so we have two types here. We have eighths with a dot, which means it's, it, the, the rhythmic value is an eighth plus a sixteenth, which is to say you hold it for the same length of time you would hold three sixteenth notes. One, two, three, four, five. See? But what we're going to do to get that articulation, we do one, two, three. Stop your bow on exactly where the dot comes rhythmically, which is to say, in this case, the third of the three sixteenths. Or, okay, you could also, if you were counting one and one and one and two and three and four, and you could do one and two and three and four, okay, then the dot becomes on the end. So, the important thing. Stop your bow completely. Bite into the string. And now you go again in the same direction. And you probably have to do something with string changes or finger change. Like this one, the very first one in the piece. Go about three quarters of your way down the bow for your stop. Now stop over to the E, let go of your fingers, and now up again. Okay, and. <laughs> You've got to plan the note that follows that short one because you don't get a break. You can't take a T break to think about it. Now what? No, you can't do that. So you have to know it's going to be the little note is up bow E and it's followed by down bow first finger low. You've got to be ready. Those two come gada, right? Like good eye. Like you know, the Australians on, on movies. Okay? So from the beginning. Now, 
Now, generally I recommend that you just stay put in your bow. Uh, in this case, you've got a rest. If your bow comes off a wee bit, not the end of the world, but make sure smack your bow back onto the string before you start your up bow F. Same thing here. So it's a dotted rhythm. We're going to go up three quarters of the bow and stop on the dot. And now we got we got to plan two notes, right? It's going to be the same note again, up bow, and smack dab into the open A. Okay, and, and now you'll notice this dotted, mm, dotted half note. Actually, we can stop the bow on the dot for that one too. One, two, stop. This is a little bit of an artistic decision. Go with what your teacher told you to, to do. Um, but it is a reasonable choice to stop on the dot because then we, we want a little bit of a phrase indication there. We, we actually want the sound to stop before the next phrase. It, it could also be a little bit longer, but then you have to be a little more prime with your fingers. See, I still had to get that articulation in there before the next. And articulation is when you stop the bow in the string. There. Same. Now we have a rest there, so that's very a very effective way of articulating. Leave your bow there, cross over, place your fingers. Now this is a quarter note with a dot on it, so it's going to be short. And we've got down, down. I have this edition. I'm not sure if the more recent edition is any different, but... Okay, because that first A has a dot on it, and we've got a down, down. So we have to do a circle. Circle your hand, right? If you're at the frog, you're pretty close to your nose. You go out, out, up, above your eyebrows, and back in from above. So it's a real circle. Don't think about the bow circle. It's your hand is doing a circle, right? Okay, it, it gets you back on time, and um, more importantly, you get a nice swing in the arm so that the next note is off to a good start. Okay, now this is the quiet part. It goes, there's a decrescendo here. So let it get quieter. Now, piano agitato. Agitated. It's like, oh, I don't know if we're lost. I don't know if we're going to get more food. It's whatever. That's agitated. How do you play, how do you do agitated with the violin? Hmm. My personal trick is you look really worried while you're playing. Okay, that's not the official answer. Okay, now this dotted rhythm is a dotted quarter. So it's one, two, three, four. Short quarter, circle, and second beat. Okay, I'll do that again. Stop. Again, you can take about three quarters of the bow. Stop. Down. Stop. Up. Same. Okay, so there's a crescendo. This is growing. You want it to get bigger sounding. So we've got a whole lot. You know, not everybody does exactly the same things here, but anywhere, really. But short, short. When you've got short notes, don't cross the middle, okay? Because your, your arm and your brain and your ear get really confused. And you look at the page, and what you see on the page is not what you're feeling. You've got to make sure, because your brain is, you know, trying to run this when you're playing, especially by memory. If what your arm is doing doesn't look like what it's memorized from the page, you get really confused. So if you've got short notes, you, you, your arm needs to do, ooh, and then long, ooh, right? It's, it's just, it's, this is all about patterns, and, and you have to um, make sense. Your, your body needs to get the feeling of the patterns. If, if your brain never really can figure out what your arms are doing, you're never going to be able to memorize it or play through it um, with a musical sense, because it's really all about um, starting out what the patterns are. Three quarters of the bow, stop, up, back, whole bow, whole bow. Three quarters, stop, down, short, short, three quarters. Okay. Um, 
this is called the, the art of bow distribution. Um, if, if you address it now while you're in Suzuki Book 2 and you kind of get it pretty accurately, um, it, it is just not an issue. It, it becomes a tool you have at your disposal. It's like having um, an amazing language that everybody understands regardless of what language they speak. Um, if, if you don't kind of get your Boeing distribution sorted at some point, um, your rhythms tend to be wrong, the phrasing is wrong, and the musical direction of the piece is not clear. So it's, you might be learning the notes, but you're not playing the music. So the bow distribution is probably more important than getting the right notes. But don't quote me on that. Okay, so... Okay, that's the same old, same old, right? Two-quarters, stop, down. Now those are short, short, shorts at the tip and on a backwards pattern. A hop, down, a hop, down. Keep them kind of like out, okay? Here's the um, Marseillaise, I think. So it's a little more military. You can make the notes more marcato, a little bit more separated. Less legato, which is... Now you got to make a decision here. Does it go legato or... I'm not sure what I prefer there. what I'm doing today. I might change my mind tomorrow. One, two, off, but I don't want to go anywhere. Stay, keep your bow, stay there. And just to breathe. One, stop, off, down. Yeah, that's our dotted rhythm, but no slur. So it's, you could go three quarters of the bow. And then back. Yeah, going on, I'm trying to hurry up. Here's our three quarters. Stop. Up. Three quarters. Yeah, you know, three quarters of whatever you're using. Now this is fortissimo, so you might want to use a lot of bow. Make let me make some good noise here. Musical noise. Still only half bow for the eighth notes. Circle. Now you, there's a, a train tracks written into the music here, and what the composer or the editor is trying to tell you is make sure that you make a really good articulation. That was the end of one phrase. A phrase is like a sentence. And now, okay, it, anytime you sniff, you'll get a good sense of there's a new phrase. while you're still moving the bow. Don't come off right at the beginning. Go to the end. But come off so that you get a nice ring off the instrument because you'll notice you were um, doing a crescendo all the way into the end. Okay? So, hope that helps.